Hello, welcome to Driver's Seat and welcome to Space Tora by Citroen. It's their latest giant MPV. Now it's available with three body lengths, XS, M and XL, and two specifications, Field. and business. Now Field. you can get five seat, seven seat, and eight seat configurations, whereas business will take up to nine passengers. There's also two engines, a 1.6 and a two liter, both diesels and both in two different variants. All engines come with a six speed manual gearbox, while the range topping most powerful two liter has a six speed automatic. Now the biggest strength for this car is clearly its passenger capability and how many people it can carry. And the seating configurations are really, really impressive. Come and take a look. So there are three seats in the middle, this twin bench and a single seater. All of them slide individually back and forward. So even in the most forward position, I've got enough leg room. Well, I can go back that far. Also tilt as well. There's a lever down the side, so I can have that as relaxing as I want. While these electric doors, which come part of a special pack, are a nice touch. As well as sliding back and forward as seats, these will also fold either as a big central armrest or for more storage. There's a further lever down the back, which will slide them even more. So this is pretty impressive, but how easy is it to get to the third row of seats, which will take another three passengers? Well, let's pop this back up and take a look. Just pop out, tilt the seat forward, slide it, and you're in. Now, I can bring the seat back, and admittedly, in this configuration, there's not a huge amount of foot room, but I've got lots of room down the side and I can put my other foot between the seats. But with all that space up front, if I just slide these forward a bit, there's still plenty of leg room up there, but now I've got lots in the back as well and acres of headroom. You can sit three across very comfortably indeed. It's really impressive. But now you might be expecting me to say there's not a lot of boot space. Well, it's not bad actually. So my box fits in there quite happily. It's not too deep, but quite high. Parcel shelves removable. And remember any of those seats can fold flat or slide further forward. The boot lid, however, is massive. But Citroen have thought about that. And with a button there, you can access the boot. All very good. So that's the passengers taken care of. What about for the driver? Well, I've got these lounge style seats that Citroen are promoting at the moment and are in the latest C3 Super Mini. It's got a good height adjuster, which is a pump, and then there's a rotary dial for the backrest. Still leaves me loads of headroom. I've got a great, really high up view. There's a reversing camera on this model and rear parking sensors so I can get some help going backwards. In here it's very clean, very tidy. There's automatic air conditioning, seven inch touchscreen, which has got sat nav again on this model, which is an optional extra. There's USB connector points and loads of storage. The door alone's got three storage compartments, but let's get this on the road and see what it's like to drive. We're testing the M body length in field trim and the two liter 150 PS diesel engine mated to a six speed manual gearbox. Interestingly, the Space Tour is based on the same platform as the C4 Picasso, although it's been modified a little. To those three body styles, the XS is 4.3 meters long, the M version which we're in is 4.9 and the XL is 5.3 meters. The Space Tourer looks like a huge car, but it might surprise you to know that actually it's no bigger than a Range Rover. That means you're going to get into underground car parks and through height restriction areas. There's 2,381 litres of storage capacity available on board, whilst this will take up to 1,400 kilograms of load weight, which is a couple of good size opera singers. The four-cylinder, two-litre diesel under the front bonnet here produces 148 brake horsepower and 273 pound-feet of torque. That's enough to get this from stationary to 62 miles an hour in 11 seconds, which is 
pretty impressive. Top speed maxes out just over the three-figure mark. It's claimed to achieve 53 miles to the gallon on a combined cycle and emits 139 grams per kilometer of CO2. Over about 100 miles, I've only got just over 31 miles to the gallon out of this. Now, I think it's probably gonna be easier to get more. There's been a lot of stop-start driving over that time, but those claimed MPG figures look quite a way off. This engine though is really flexible, it's very impressive. I've pulled away from stationary in third and very low speeds in fourth gear. As you go through the gears, once you get to third and fourth, you can flick it straight into fifth from third and sixth from fourth. It's still got enough low end torque to pull it through. That's mainly due to peak torque arriving at 2000 revs, but it certainly doesn't feel a cliff when you hit it. it feels very strong beneath that as well. Max powers at 4,000 revs, and it can get a shift on its, it's really usable for real world scenarios. The gearbox is pretty decent. It's not got too long a throw, six gears, and they all clunk into place quite nicely. It's, it's not a chore at all to be swapping cogs. Now, I'm certainly not expecting this to win any awards for handling prowess. It's more important how good the ride is. Up front, it's pretty decent. All but really the most severe of potholes and road scars are felt. It deals with everything quite nicely. It's also not too wallowy, so you don't feel queasy. And that goes for the same in the back, although the ride deteriorates very slightly the further back you go. Handling wise, if you picture yourself a nice tall jelly and put it on a Japanese skyscraper in an earthquake, it gives you a bit of an idea how scary some of the corners can be if you're going too fast. If you drive it sensibly, like you'd like to be chauffeur driven, then actually it's not too bad at all. The steering's not the best. It's reasonably well weighted, but it's got quite a lot of play in it and you're taking a leap of faith that it's connected to the front wheels in some form. This costs 31,900, but is packed full of equipment. There's over 6,300 pounds worth. Let me read that through. It's got metallic paint, 180 degree park assist, which is the cameras that show around the car when you're reversing, which I would thoroughly recommend in a vehicle this size. There's head up display, which just shows you the speed doesn't add too much. Uh, the satellite navigation, alloy wheels, curtain airbags, the grip control system, which is the same glorified traction control system off the C4 Cactus, which I still haven't seen too many benefits from at the moment. There's easy entry, which is the electric doors, and you can wave your foot under the rear bumper and the side doors open, uh, which again is a good option, but quite expensive at around a thousand pounds. And then that third row of seats is an optional extra as well. Flare trim also comes with cruise control, Bluetooth, mirror link and Apple Play, auto wipers and lights and LED daytime running lights. So if you're after an eight seater, the Space Tourer is well worth considering. The seating flexibility is excellent. The engine's torquey and strong and it's Full of kit. Be careful with the options list as it can get quite expensive but there's certainly things on there that you should consider like the 360 camera. I like this car and I think it's well worth considering. Thanks for watching Driver's Seat. If you've liked today's video remember to subscribe to our channel and let us know in the comment section below what you think about Citroen Space Tourer. Now I've got a fair to collect around here somewhere.